I'm so frustrated by Doug Ford, the Ontario Premier, but I shouldn't be. I mean, show me a politician who doesn't disappoint you, who doesn't break your heart. It was Doug's late brother, Rob Ford, who was the beloved one in the family who had the natural populist instincts. Maybe it was precisely because he was so flawed and had so many observable problems and personal demons that he was so sympathetic. I remember when the late Rob Ford, who was really fat, he was going on a diet and he said so publicly, and I get that. It's a way of getting encouragement. It's a way of motivating yourself because you've said you're going to lose weight. You've told everybody, so now you have to do it because even if you're fine letting yourself down, you can't let everyone else down. That's often my motivation for doing things too. Maybe it is for you, but it's hard. And Rob Ford one day walked into a Kentucky Fried Chicken and someone took a photo of it and sold it to the Toronto Star. I presume they sold it. The Toronto Star had a bounty for anything embarrassing about Rob Ford and the Star put this KFC entrance as their huge story on their main page of their website. Top news in the world. Ha ha, look at that fat guy eating KFC. I mean, can you believe it? Can we impeach him? Because no one at the Toronto Star is fat, you see and it's fine to fat shame someone on the right. The local left-wing freebie newspaper called Now Magazine had a pretty convincing Photoshop of Rob Ford's head onto a nearly naked body of someone really fat. Here's CTV writing about it, purely for the public interest, and they show the image purely for the public interest. Look, the media all got in on it. I tell you, this mean girl shtick was quite something. Um, the Globe and Mail published a highbrow literary thinkfluencer who called uh, Rob Ford fat, I think, like 15 times in one column. I'm not sure if that's news or opinion, but it was hilarious. <laughs> He's so fat. Now, they later deleted it. I can't find a copy of the original quickly. But here's another news website having a good laugh at it. My point is the personal viciousness was something I've never seen before or since that bad. It was worse than anything I saw Preston Manning go through or Stockwell Day go through. Boy, they hated Rob Ford, and they were so brutally personal. Here's Trudeau's CBC state broadcaster sending someone right into Ford's home, right on his doorstep, right on his property, when he was taking his own children to school. Here, now, I've altered this video in one way. I've taken out their laugh track to show you what it was actually like. Mayor Ford, it's me, Mark Delahunty. Oh, but Mayor my Ford, car, please? because I gave up the Princess Warrior stuff, <laughs> but when I saw what was happening oh, to you, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, oh, I came all the way from Newfoundland to talk to you, honey. Put the plug in the jug, keep the muzzle on, dog. He was a much gutsier kind of fella than that. Yeah, hilarious. Going on someone's front doorstep with a camera while shrieking insults at him when he's taking his young children to school. They actually flew in that former comedian, Mary Walsh, Dreadfully unfunny, but they call her a comedian. Uh, it wasn't comedy, it was a smear. They brought her out of retirement, flew her in from St. John's just for that. You know, Rob Ford had so many personal demons, dr drug use, alcoholism, overeating. I mean, imagine the mental stress and strain, the depression, and then being hounded like this day and night by the media party. You know that so-called comedian, Mary Walsh? Um, by the way, she's a long-time drunk, too. She talks about it, and I sympathize with her. Uh, and here she is as part of the Bell Let's Talk mental health moment. Hey, guys, don't pick on people with mental illness. Hey, guys, let's be nice to each other, not bully people. Hey, guys, let's not pick on people with addictions. Ha <laughs> ha, except Rob Ford, sucker! Yeah, that was an ambassador for mental health. Anyways, the thing is, of course, I don't have to tell you this, all of these abusive personal attacks on Rob Ford only made ordinary people love him more because when they mock Ford for being fat, what do you think um, they're thinking about you being fat? When they mock him for not keeping to his diet, what do they think about you? Do you have a smoking problem, a drinking problem, whatever? What would they say about you if they deal with the mayor this way? So the more the fancy people hated him, the more the ordinary people sort of loved him. He suffered for them. And he never forgot who his friends were, and he never forgot who his enemies were. How could he forget? They would never let him forget. And every once in a while, we were reminded that he knew. Like this wonderful, wonderful interview with that pompous Marxist on the CBC radio. Perhaps my favorite media interview by a politician of all time. It's not even contemptuous. You have to care 
to show contempt. Just absolutely treating the CBC the way it ought to be treated. Scratch that. Treating them better than they ought to be treated. Treating them with more respect than they treat others. But I give you, without more comment from me, the greatest media interview ever done by a politician. Mr. Ford, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. People are saying it's a, calling it a stunning win. What do you yeah, think that... Things are, things are going really well. What drew so much... Oh, support? Chapter Juniors aren't even here, eh? All right. Hello, All right. hello, Mr. Ford, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, yeah. Oh, are you at some event or... I'm a coach. I'm a football coach. Okay, so you're at football practice then? Yes. All right, well, okay, we'll continue then. What is it do you think drew so much support to your campaign? No, it's just people are sick and tired of the wasteful spending. People are sick and tired of wasteful spending. That's the, that's the bottom line. That's what it comes down to. Well, they were you know, I'm the only one that could go down there. You just go get cha- Go out and get changed. Don't worry about the water right now. Sorry. Uh huh. So, um, yeah, no, people are just fed up with, uh, you know, uh, politicians squandering uh, hard earned tax dollars. And they know that I'm going to get rid of the six dollar car registration tax and the land transfer tax. Well, you know that your campaign has been compared to Mike Harris's common sense revolution, to the Tea Party movement. Do you see those comparisons? Compared to whatever they want, I don't care. <laughs> I just, I just know the taxpayers uh, want, uh, you know, the gravy train to come to an end, and that's uh, Rob Ford's got to do it. Do you think and, there are uh, similarities? And I, I don't, I don't, I don't see there's any similarities. I uh, just know that, uh, like I said, I'm going to put an end to the wasteful spending. And, uh, you know, stop the gravy train. Sorry, I'm being distracted. Well, so, mi- that's, that's pretty well it. Uh, Mr. Ford, do you think that, though, there's not people that who might think that their taxes are too high or that too much is being spent on things? There seems to be a division in the city. People in yeah. the, uh, you've seen it in even your voting, people who live in the more the core of the city have different priorities than people in the suburbs. Uh, so when you stop the gravy train... Some people want to see more public transportation, more bike lanes. Others right. want to see better routes out into the suburbs. How are well, you going first, to reconcile that? Yeah, well, the first and foremost concern with people is money. That's the first and foremost concern. So I, I'm going to make sure our finances um, you know, are, are well taken care of, and then we can deal with all the other issues. But uh, money is the first and foremost concern, and uh, that's what my... Uh, uh, what I'm going to concentrate on. Well, sh- well, sure, that's everyone's concern, but we're not sh- sure what it is that you're going to save money on. Are, are you going to reduce Sorry, public I just transportation? Told you that I'm going to get rid of the six dollar car registration tax and the land transfer tax. So um, maybe I'm not making myself clear, but I'm going to get rid of the six dollar car registration tax and the land transfer tax, and we're going to stop the wasteful spending and not have twelve thousand dollar retirement parties and you know all the other nonsense that's been going on for seven years. Anyways, I, I got to let you go well, here. Well, can and, I ask you uh, about public transportation before you go? Pardon me? And I can't talk to you right now. I really, I'm on a very tight schedule, so I hate to be rude, but I got to let you go and we can chat another time. Really nice talking to you. All the best. Bye-bye. I love that so much. And before I come to my point, and I'm sure you're waiting for my point, let me show you perhaps the most concentrated Rob Ford moment of perfection you'll ever see, too. That sums him up in a minute. Tells you everything you need to know about him, why you can trust him, why, as I said on Sun News Network on our Rob Ford special those years ago, I'd rather have Rob Ford drunk than any liberal sober. Ford is a deeply flawed man, but I'd take him drunk over his left-wing predecessor sober. Yeah, Rob was great. Here's why. I've got all the free passes for counselors. I call them free perks that are tax-free which is costing the taxpayers millions of dollars. So let's start off. Um, Free zoo pass. Toronto Zoo VIP pass. The VIP named on this card and his or her family will be granted parking, admission, and rides at the Toronto Zoo without charge. I can bring everybody and my family here to the zoo for free. The average person has to pay $15, $20 $15, $20 to get in, $10 or $15 to park, $5 or $10 a ride. The poor average family is paying $200. Counselors that are paying, uh, getting paid $100,000 get to get in for free. It's absolutely wrong. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Let's get on to some other stuff here. Metro passes. Here's a Metro pass. 
This is equivalent to $1,300 a year. Again, counselors make $100,000 a year. I take home $1,400 a week net. Why should counselors get a free Metro Pass? The TTC is dying for money. We've just increased fares 25 cents. The average person out there, the poor working student or the poor working uh, senior that has to get out there and get on the bus every day has to pay $3. But we, the counselors, get on the bus for free. This should be eliminated immediately. That's amazing. And I tell you all this, and I go on this 10-minute Rob Ford reminiscence rant to tell you, Doug Ford is no Rob Ford. They look a bit the same, they have the same mom and dad, and that's about it, that's it. Doug Ford is not a populist. He despises the little people, at least he says so. He doesn't champion them. He's been hanging out with the fancy people now, the folks who hated his brother, called his brother fat. I mean, look at this headline from the Toronto Star, the paper that mercilessly mocked his brother, hounded his brother, paid people cash, so they secretly filmed them on their cell phones in private homes and private places to embarrass them. Doug Ford loves being loved by the powerful people who hate him. He sort of hates the little people, the people who used to be called Ford Nation, but really aren't anymore. They didn't leave him, the people. He left them, and he stabbed them in the heart on the way to the Toronto Star's uh, editorial board. We, we have you know a bunch of yahoos out in the front of Queen's Park sitting there protesting that the place isn't open as they're breaking the law. Yahoos who are stupid. And as for the organizers, you know something, guys? I, I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. If we weren't so backlogged on MRIs, I'd send you to the MRI to get your brain scanned because I just, I don't think there's anything in there. Yeah, that doesn't sound like Rob Ford, does it? That sounds like the Toronto Star mocking Rob Ford. Except the words are coming out of Doug Ford's mouth. Doug Ford isn't the type to cut up his little perk cards. He's not ending the gravy train. When have you ever heard him even use that phrase anymore? He's retired it. No, he's not shutting down the gravy train. He's shutting down mom and pop businesses. Restaurants, bars, theaters, gyms, whatever. Rob Ford fought for the little guy. Doug Ford fights against the little guy. Oh, it's for your own good, you see. And Doug Ford has an anger and a rage that Rob Ford never showed towards the people. What a disappointment. And I say this is a guy who went on TV, the most watched episode in Sun News Network history, to praise the brothers. But really, now that I think about it, I, I wasn't really praising Doug Ford. I really didn't know much about him at the time. It was Rob Ford I knew, and it shows. So we have an Ontario Conservative government that isn't conserving anything, really. Uh, look at this. Doug Ford says the Liberal government is amazing. And uh, she says, uh, Christy Freeland says that Doug Ford is her therapist. It's a lovely friendship, isn't it? Uh, Doug Ford isn't loyal to Ford Nation or the Conservatives. Uh, he's got no time for them. He's loyal to his new friends in the media party, in the Liberal Party. He's not going to campaign for the Conservatives against Trudeau. How could he? Why would he? He's on their gravy train now. He's the conductor. Why would he derail it? What a disappointment. But really, where's a Conservative to go? I personally know of a number of Conservative MPPs who are upset with how pro-liberal Ford is, but put aside the partisan part. They're just upset with Ford's second wave of lockdowns, his complete deference to experts like Theresa Tam and the dozen mini Theresa Tams salted throughout the government of Ontario. There are a grand total of 34 people in all of Ontario, population 14 and a half million, 34 people on ventilators. There are almost 3,000 acute care beds with ventilators for COVID patients. So each ventilator patient has 100 hospital beds to themselves. Um, here's a graph showing how many people in Ontario have tested positive on any given day. And you bet it's skyrocketing. Oh, yes. But the number of people in the hospital, it just isn't skyrocketing. They're not getting sick, or at least not very sick. No wonder the media keeps talking about cases, not actual illnesses. You see, half of those cases are, are false positives. So says the government itself. And in fact, if you're testing in a population that doesn't have very much COVID, you'll get false positives almost half the time. So who's going to criticize Doug Ford and his unscientific lockdowns and his 
bans and his rules and his regulations and his dismissive smear against the people who, the liberal party, they want to go even harder against the people. Same with the NDP. They love this. This is the big spending, big borrowing, big taxing, socialist utopia they always dreamed about. The eco-nuts love this too. They shut down the economy as they always wanted to do. The government unions love it. They're essential. They get paid no matter what. They get paid not to work. Private businesses are shut down. The political class hasn't been touched by these lockdowns. None of Doug Ford's new friends have been impacted in any way. And you don't seriously think he follows his own rules about social distancing or masks or not connecting households, do you? I mean, do you really? I mean, do you really? So what's the alternative? I see Maxime Bernier is running in a federal by-election in North Toronto. I like him, but he's going to be lucky to get 10% of the vote there. Sorry, I wish it weren't so. I wish he'd win. But even if he did, he's federal, of course. He's not provincial. Provincially, I see nothing other than a handful of conservative backbenchers too timid to speak out seriously. Just total submission and compliance in that caucus. Very obedient. Except last night, I see that Jim Carahelios, a gadfly in both the federal and provincial conservative parties, and his wife, Belinda, a conservative MPP who has been ejected from Doug Ford's caucus, they were talking about starting a new political party. So uh, on Friday, right before the Thanksgiving weekend, at the end of day, Elections Ontario sent us formal documentation and they approved the name of a new political party, the New Blue Party of Ontario. And uh, we've now received the okay to use that name uh, for a political party. And we'll either have to collect a thousand signatures from people across Ontario who are eligible to vote in a general election mm -hmm. and submit that to Elections Ontario to get approved. Uh, there's also a possibility that we can work with some other smaller parties in Ontario that already exist and see if there would be a merger of some right. sorts to speed up the process. And um, that's help is on the way. So people have reached out to us, said, you can't stop. You got to run again, Belinda. Yes. <laughs> you guys need to together not give up. And uh, so that's the solution, creating a new party in Ontario because the Ontario PC party, there's no democracy inside of it. And they say that Randy Hillier, an outspoken conservative MP, also kicked out of the caucus. Well, who knows? He might join them too, possibly. So it's the new blue party of Ontario for us moving forward. It's very exciting. <laughs> and the first goal would be to help you get reelected. And Randy Hillier, whether he runs as an independent or maybe uh, when he uh, closes the loop there with the Ontario PC party sitting on their riding board, mm -hmm. uh, it'd be great to have him run under the party yes. banner. Wasn't that interesting? I really wish Maxime Bernier had a seat in Parliament, just one, maybe many. But without one, he's just a pundit, really. A new party with seats in, an, without seats, rather, a new party without seats, it's, it's an advocacy group. It has no resources, no office, no right to speak in the legislature. But imagine a party with a couple of seats. Don't laugh, the provincial liberals only have eight. I don't know Belinda Carahelios well. Randy Hillier has been the best critic of the lockdowns in Ontario. I mean, look at this provocative, but fact-based question he put the other day. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. In my supplemental question yesterday, I asked this government if the people of Ontario should prepare for internment camps. In September, the federal government posted a call for expressions of interest for contractors to supply, provide, and manage quarantine isolation camps throughout every province and every territory in Canada. These quarantine isolation camps, however, are not limited to people with COVID, but provide a wide latitude for many people to be detained. Surely this government is aware of the intentions to build these isolation camps from coast to coast. And my question to the Premier is, how many of these camps will be built? And how many people does this government expect to detain? Question. It's not a conspiracy theory. That's a question based on a procurement contract tendered by the Liberals. I can tell you, many Conservative MPPs are thinking that quarantine facilities procurement that's nuts that's crazy don't go there but not one has the courage to say it out loud the ndp and the liberals are lusting for it doug ford's silent about it i like the fact that randy hillier is talking about it if this new party starts even with two mpps they can raise issues that otherwise would be ignored real issues real questions providing real opposition that the media party hasn't that other opposition parties haven't 
the civil liberties associations haven't. Real opposition. And who knows? Maybe they would grow in number with more defections. Surely not every one of the 72 PCs love what Doug Ford is doing. Surely there is at least, I don't know, one businessman in there or one nurse or doctor or accountant who says, you're ruining people's lives now. The lockdown is killing more than it saves. Who knows? A guy can dream. This video has been taken out from behind the Rebel News Plus paywall by Jim and Belinda Karahelios, who are in the process of forming a new Ontario political party. To learn more about the party, go to newblueontario.com.